Okay, we're back on our Jubilee tool. Hopefully this will be the last of it. <clears throat> so what we're going to do, I need to make 10 pins. And there will be a quarter inch in diameter. And these pins, <clears throat> I will uh, I will press them into these holes that I did on the uh, dividing head there. And uh, that will create uh, what will engage in the splines. So I'm going to turn a taper, a little short angle, 18 degree or a 36 degree angle, I guess, included uh, on the end of these pins. And I'll press these pins in here and lay a little weld on top of them so they can't come out. <clears throat> so, first thing I need to do is I need to set this compound at, eight, at 18 degrees. So I'd like to show you guys uh, one method for... Uh, accurately uh, setting this compound. Now I don't need this kind of accuracy for what I'm doing but a lot of times on these these uh, Asian made uh, lays you know these these marks down here are not all that accurate and also I run into I run into times this thing's only marked around to here and uh, a lot of times like when I want to thread you know I don't have any reference marks for my 29 and a half degrees I like to set my compound at so this is a this is one way to uh, set this compound. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to travel the compound one, exactly one inch, okay? And 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 as this compound travels one inch, it's going to change uh, the height here at, at 309, and that'll give me exactly 18 degrees. So this is a very, very accurate way uh, to set a compound rest. <clears throat> we're going to use this. I brought this home from work. We're going to use this. This is a Nogia, Nogia magnetic base. I've had this for about 10 years. And uh, I, I really like it. It's, it's really handy to use. It's very flexible and uh, pr pretty rigid. It's a, I like it a lot better than a steric. But uh, so what I'm going to do here is <clears throat> I'm going to set this indicator against this chuck, and I'm just going to kind of eyeball center up and down. And like I said, I've, I've got an inch marked here on my compound for reference. I'll still use the dial uh, to, to make sure I get it in the right spot. But I'm going to back it up here to this first mark, zero out my dial like that and then I'm gonna run this up here and we'll zero this indicator out go ahead I know you guys can't see that dial but I've got it set on zero and I got my counter hand set on zero I got my compound on my first mark. These marks are an inch apart for reference. I've got my compound dial set on zero. So I'm going to crank this compound an inch that way and this indicator needs to change in height 309 thousandths and that'll mean that I'm setting exactly on 18 degrees. So here we go. Okay, coming up on the inch. There's exactly an inch, and I've already set this, and that's dropped 309 thousandths. So that's perfect. That's that means I've got this compound set on 18 degrees. And like I said, that's just another way to set your compound. Well, I'll do that again. I'll hold this up here so you can see the indicator. So there, the indicator sitting on zero, and I got my compound sitting on zero. I'm gonna move it exactly an inch. All right. So there's a hundred thousandths drop. 200 thousandths, 300, now I'm coming up on my inch on my compound travel, get up here to zero, there it is, 309, that's exactly what we want, that's perfect. So now, we're going to turn some, turn some pins, I'm going to put an angle on these pins and that's going to be what engages in the spline on that on that transmission in that in that Jubilee tractor. 
Need to get that thing turned back around there. We're going to be using this part off tool. So we'll just kind of eyeball this. Get this straight up there. Better lock it in there first. That'll be close enough for what we're doing. Use this old TPG tool here. I like it. It works pretty good. Now, let's see if we can put an angle on here. Go ahead and run this back. I like to keep this flush here, and I got a zero set right there. That way, I can always come back to it. set up there a little bit. Alright, we're ready to start forming this taper on the end of this little quarter inch diameter here, so let's uh, let's see what we can do. Now I've uh, faced off the end of the pole and I've set my carriage at zero. I've also touched off on this diameter and I've zeroed my cross slide and I figured that it, if I screw my cross slide in, Hundred and twenty-one thousandths. Uh, that'll be just where I want this angle to end at. But we're gonna take that in a couple of cuts. There's eighty thousandths. There's a hundred. This will be the final cut right here at one twenty-one. Check that. I believe that's pretty close to what we need. <clears throat> Let's do a little bit of deburn on it. I'll hit it with the file here real quick. <laughs> it off before we make all ten of them take it up there and see if that's what we want or not I think it's gonna work out good I think 
we could probably Alright, that speed ought to be about right. I think it'll probably chatter a little bit, but that's alright, we don't mind. Okay, we've got our 10 pins made, as you can see here, and we've got our part we made in the other videos with the 10 holes around the outside. So we're going to take these pins, push them in around the outside here. I'm just kind of showing you how this is going to work when I I'll go ahead and put these in here for good. I'll take that main shaft out of that transmission and I'll slide this tool over it and then I'll push these pins in and then I'll uh, weld them on the back side. That way they'll, they'll be set at the right height. This will just give you an idea of what we're doing. I don't know if you can see in there or not. <clears throat> that right there will form, that'll engage in the splines on the tractor, on that main shaft. And that way I can take my torque wrench, get on this flat, or this uh, hex, or square, excuse me, that I cut the other day. And I'll be able to check the preload on the main shaft. So next time I'll uh, take the main shaft out, slide this over it, push these pins in, and uh, spot them with some weld on the outside so they don't slip out. And uh, then I'll be ready to ready to get back to rebuilding the transmission. It's been kind of a kind of a roundabout way of getting there, but I'm getting there.